Welcome back. In Nigeria, electricity consumers across the country are groaning about the inadequate power situation. From Lagos, Delta and Niger State, our correspondent Chris Ellams captured their complaints, some of which range from exorbitant charges to outright blackout. Some of them are now asking for alternative service providers. <laughs> It's a harvest of dissatisfied electricity consumers from different parts of the country. They are out to protest for services rendered by their service providers amidst exorbitant bills. At the gate of Eco Electricity Distribution Company in Marina, Lagos, traders and business owners are here to deliver a letter to sever ties with their service providers. They claim they found a light in an independent power project that could guarantee them a 24-hour power generation. Just of recent, we got to know that a company can give us even 24-7 electricity supply. And we said this is just good for us. But we now saw the publication in the newspapers from Eco Disco that they won't allow that. The managing director of Eco Electricity Distribution Company who received them promises to look into their complaint. The letter has been received and I promise you that I will review it and I will revert ASAP. In Niger State, women, their children barricade the major road along Maitumbi town frustrated by the lack of power supply for more than seven months. We lost about three of our members. That enough is, is, is enough for them to sympathize with us. However, the general manager, Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, says their problem stems from encroachment on their facilities by members of the community. There is a pole, a shop, that our pole is inside. So the encroachment is such a way that they have encroached up to the whole level. The songs from the oil and gas rich Delta State is not one to dance to. It's a summation of their anger over the alleged refusal of Bini Electricity Distribution Company to energize their transformers, which they were compelled to donate to the disco. This has left them in darkness for close to one year. The area mainly affected is the government reserved area, phase two Oshimili South local government area. It is disappointing to know that a private entity such as them uh, can afford to say because of just a mere 14 persons who are indebted to them, refuse to give us power supply. How will you sit at the comfort of your home in, in your offices on a system in Benin and you are sending out outrageous estimated bills to people? Addressing the protesters, the corporate affairs officer of the company claims their indebtedness is the reason they've remained in darkness. We will restore the supply to them, but they have to at least key into the process by ensuring that they settle uh, part of the indebtedness they are standing on their, on their previous bills. So long, too long. But how much longer will the people wait and wail in darkness, frustrated by inadequate services? Pushed against the wall, the rebound could be unpleasant. Chris Ellams, Channels Television News. Away from Nigeria, Tunisia's parliament has passed a law designed to help the government in its fight against corruption. The legislation will force senior officials, including the president, cabinet ministers and judges, to declare their income. Prime Minister Yusuf Chahid says this would make it easier to identify any illegally acquired wealth. Corruption is widespread in Tunisia and it is believed to cost the country's struggling economy billions of dollars every year. And the Polish city of Wroclaw came alive on Tuesday as a Tanzanian albino group performed a powerful play which shows the discrimination and violence they face in their home country. The group, Albino Revolution Cultural Troupe, performed at Wroclaw's annual Brave Festival, the group's first tour outside East Africa. In future, they aim to go even further afield to spread their message of tolerance and respect. 
a Tanzanian albino performance group took to the stage at a festival in the Polish city of Rothslav to highlight the exclusion, discrimination and violence people like them face in their home country. Most of its members have albinism, which causes a loss of skin pigmentation. Albino revolution is going to troop. We're just using art as a weapon to educate the society, to show we are we doing, what are we doing, what, what we can do. Society still discriminate, discriminating people with albinism in Tanzania, which means we need to educate them. That is our, our, I mean, our mission. People with albinism in sub-Saharan Africa often face discrimination and isolation and are at risk of mutilation and murder for their body parts, believed by some to bring wealth and luck and pride in black magic. Uh, albinism is a people as you, as me, as anybody. So that's why we have to help them. And I joined with them because to show the people or society that the people, uh, the albinism is not different. Albinism, uh, they are like, like us or like black people, like everybody in the world. So we're supposed to help them and don't kill them. According to Tanzania-based organization Under the Same Sun, which advocates for people with albinism, more than 170 attacks have been carried out on albinos in Tanzania since 2006. The group not only promotes tolerance, but also gives its members more confidence. Some people, they can see, people with albinism, they can't do a good job. They can't work, you see. They can't, uh, I mean, to manage a big, uh, even uh, companies, yeah? So when we, we, we are here, even now, our, when we are performing, yeah, I think it is, they understand what are we doing, and we have a big energy. Due to the lack of skin pigmentation, people with albinism are more vulnerable to skin cancer. When ARCT was founded in 2000, it numbered 35 artists, but in the intervening years, many numbers of the group died, most often from the disease. The group now consists of 10 performers, two of which do not have the condition. And that's Network Africa. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.